Welcome to the Corey Coleman Studios. We're here right off of, I don't is know that what try, that Are you trying to do Carlisle? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to. Is it more like this? Uh, we're in the middle of Fantastic Fest here in Austin. Yes. Which means uh, Carlisle is fully submerged in that, so he's not here. Yeah. So I need a, a surrogate, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm submerged in it, too, but, you know, I, I still care about my friends <laughs> oh no no come on here we go now you know that's gonna that's gonna make him all pissed off and now he's gonna come back and it's he's gonna start not gonna big... listen to this that's right he's not, he's not gonna <laughs> no actually uh with doing fantastic fest because you know he writes for two other people uh, yeah so he he gets into that he writes for them and then you know it's like at least two of us doing this for for our part yeah so i told him i said hey man is it all right if i bring in you know cyrus let him sit in in your place and he's like yeah that's cool and he's like I, yeah the I, acronym still fits so it does yeah. it does a couple of colons with k and c exactly man how you doing i'm doing good i'm a little tired i imagine you i know you're a little tired <laughs> yeah, i can't take this man I, I i don't know it's been this festival is what eight days yeah eight, well it's sort of it's really seven but they call it eight and let me tell you, man, I have had a blast with this. Yeah. This fantastic Fest for people who don't know. You could probably, you are much more veteran of this festival than I am. So you should probably tell people what it's about. Yeah, this is, I think it's my fourth year of it. And yeah, fourth year. It's been going on five years. But uh, yeah, it's um, a collection of genre films, really. That the, the real appeal is, the, the appeal is twofold. One, it's all genre. So it's fantasy, horror, science fiction, mystery, ac- uh, martial arts type films. Comedy. Like that. Yeah, it's, uh, some comedy. There's even, they, they even like went out of their way to say Western. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Stuff that's more genre oriented. They've thrown in a couple things that aren't here and there, but generally speaking, it's mainly that. And the biggest appeal is 90% of it's all in one location. So unlike other film festivals like South by Southwest, when mm-hmm. you're running your ass all over town, carting around your laptop and shit, and here you just go to the theater next door. <laughs> yeah, it's all in, pretty much in one location. They've had a few at the Paramount Theater here in town. It's the, the Paramount Theater. Everybody wants to say it's our grand historical theater, and I hate that shit, man. I I like the theater itself. I like the concept of it, and I think it's beautiful looking. But God, they just need to rip out those seats and put something that doesn't make my butt want to just leave my body and yeah. go take a vacation somewhere because that is the most uncomfortable shit I have ever sat on. Man, I went to go see a movie on Thursday night and they put me in the balcony. Now, I don't know if in in, in the 1920s and 30s, people were just shorter. Yeah, right. <laughs> because I, I'm 6'3 and I go up to the balcony and I'm, I'm trying and they put me right up on the front row of, of the balcony and the bar on the front row it is right next to the front of the seat which pretty much means i'm sitting there with my head between my knees <laughs> <laughs> look I, I got my own legs i got my own two knees between my head looking like i'm wearing my knees for, for earphones i know at least you were there and didn't have to worry about kicking somebody's seat when i was in the balcony for survival of the dead mm-hmm. i mean there was just no room i had to like wedge my feet under my seat otherwise the guy in front of me would be like hey stop kicking my seat i was like i wasn't i was just breathing oh, <laughs> oh i know i had to do that too like i don't want to i don't want to kick the person's seat in front of me yeah so i'm sitting up there trying to look i look like i'm in third grade waiting for story time you know <laughs> with my my legs up in the air, but it's uh, yeah, man, it's our our. I was stretched out, and my, here's the funny thing, you know, uh, on the balcony up mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. If you looked up to the balcony, instead of seeing like people, instead of seeing me like hanging over the balcony, you saw my legs hanging over. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> I was like, man, I hope my flip flops don't fall because I'm gonna get hit on the head. They just need to attach me to a harness to the ceiling at that point. At least I can stretch <laughs> my legs that way. You know, that wasn't as bad as the. Okay, so we saw two movies in a row there. We saw Cirque to Freak, The Vampire's Assistant, mm-hmm. which I really liked a lot, so much to my surprise, and Survival of the Dead, which. Well, you know what? Okay. Yes. Do we want to get into this now? Or do we want no, to? No, we'll save that for later. You'll have yeah. to wait and find out what I thought about Survival yeah. of the Dead. Yeah, people, we decided to make this sort of our Fantastic Fest edition of uh, a couple of cold ones. Sure. Um, we have seen a lot of movies that we're going to talk about. We're going to do individual podcast forms, so we probably won't go into length about them right here. Yeah. But we will kind of brush up on what we saw, some this of the things be- that we've had, uh, have experienced during the festival, some of the crazy shit we saw. Weird half naked chicks gyrating around on poles. Man, see, you saw all that shit. You're going to be having to tell me that because I, I, I can tell you the crazy shit I saw, which is pretty much nothing. So just make some shit up. I'll believe I'm it. Just, oh, y'all can do that. <laughs> Man, a real zombies attack. <laughs> well, okay. Everybody thought they were in costume, but it was the real zombie uprising. Real plausible stuff. All right, you know something? Since I do this every week with Carla, I'm going to try to do the, uh, the singing that the, he does every week. This, he, oh, is it sung? 
Oh, yeah, that's what he does. That's, oh, okay. Yeah, he's he, live at the Coleman compound. No, right most, off I thirty five. Wow, you did a little dance and all that with you. I you, know. Right? <laughs> you pull out your hat and cane. See, he doesn't put on a performance like you do. He just kind of sings. But well, I'm putting on the Ritz over here. Yeah, he got, <laughs> Cyrus has his coattails on, his tuxedo. He do a little soft shoe right now. <laughs> when <laughs> I'm taking Carlisle's place, and I can't all think right, of anything right, to right, say, I'm I just sing. My cattle pride around here. <laughs> Sit your ass down. Sorry. All right, so. Uh, what we do here Now you familiar with what we do No I never listened to this Okay I didn't think so <laughs> I can tell right when we, when I'm we opened kidding. up I'm just kidding I'm just kidding Yes I, you, you go through the t- the biggest movies financially of the week And yes. give a little like Either that's full shit And people are stupid Or yay I'm glad that movie's doing well <laughs> Well, that's more Carlisle's part. <laughs> I'm usually just looking at the internet when he's talking. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. I do need Cialis. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I could find a Russian wife. <laughs> All right. So, uh, the way we start out is we start out with the top five brought to you by Spill. <laughs> that's what he says. <laughs> Damn, but, that really does. How did you talk like that? That really does hurt your voice. Top five brought to you by Spill. <laughs> <laughs> That dude stopped smoking for like two years now. He still sounds like he's been like, like, like there's a smokestack in his throat. He smoked so much at one point, I think he just permanently damaged his vocal cords. I don't know what it is. I'm sure if you ask him, he has some elaborate story involving some concert he never actually went to and like some group, some famous person <laughs> blowing him. But, you know, <laughs> I'm going to chalk it up to cigarettes. <laughs> well, you see, I was hanging out with you too. And, uh... <laughs> That's all right. Let's. Let's see. Uh, and- when Janet Jackson had decided she'd had enough of her boyfriend, she wanted to make him look, make him jealous. So she pulled me backstage and said, <laughs> Carlisle, come here. And Bono was just rubbing his dick in the ashtray before he stuck it in my mouth. <laughs> I'm still blowing smoke rings till this day. <laughs> <laughs> a horrible, horrible thing to say. <laughs> Even Bono said somewhere like, well, it feels like something terrible was just said about me. All right, so we're going to start out. Cargill with Bono's <laughs> dick. So. Uh, no, let's get into the, uh, number five here. No, oh, I thought it was ten. Is it just oh, five? Oh, no, we just started. The, no, the top. Okay, well, that's better. That's why we say the top five. Okay, well, I wasn't really paying attention. Yeah, so. You don't even, it, it ain't listening to me. I was like, I was like I, either he's terrible at math, and I don't think he's a dumb guy, so he's just not fucking listening to me right now. I got right my now. own internet over here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's, on his, he's on his phone right now and shit. <laughs> I'm applying to Austin Friend Finder. Playing fucking Tetris. Uh, <laughs> all right, number five. Number five is... Number five. <laughs> was that Ralph the Dog from I, the Muppets? I don't know. <laughs> number five. I'm just doing stuff. Just read I'll it. I'll say to myself, what a beautiful word. <laughs> what a wonderful word. Uh, number five is uh, Tyler Perry's I Can Do Bad All By Myself. Really? That is still in the top w- five, Wasn't man. that like two weeks ago? This movie has been in the top five for five weeks. Wow. Black woman doesn't have a lot of money these days to spend on movies, apparently. Well, they all save it up for Medea. Yeah. It's like this. You know, the people don't know this about black women. They don't go to movies. Black women didn't go to movies before until Tyler Perry started making movies. This is when black, that's when black women start going to see films. Well, uh, that, see, uh, Tyler Perry movies are the only movies you're allowed to talk back at the screen. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's like a goddamn church service. Well, there's nobody else who cares in there, so. No, it's just going to start coming around with, like, plates asking for money when they go through. <laughs> Please, for the Lord, sir. Uh, this movie made this weekend 44, um, I'm sorry, no, it's up to $44.5 million. And this weekend it brought in 4.8. Now, like I said, Tyler Perry makes his movies for about $40, so this is pretty good right here. Yeah, it's 100% profit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. T- t- 10 times over. <laughs> 100 <laughs> times over. So, a million times over. <laughs> So t- Tyler Perry is doing all right, man. Let's go to number four. Number four. I don't know. I can't hit those high notes anymore. Damn, your testicles just came out through your mouth just like <laughs> man, you tried to hit song. <laughs> number four. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, swallow. I'll give you a chance. Uh, number four is The Informant. Oh, good. I'm surprised it made it in the top five, honestly. I just, it's a Steven, is it Soderbergh or Soderbergh? By the way, I'm sorry. Tyler Perry has been in the top uh, five for uh, three weeks. And the informant, this is its second week. Uh, it has made $20.1 million right now. Wow. The movie cost $22 million to make, so they're well on their way to making a profit with this. Uh, brought in $7 million this weekend. So 
for a Steven Soderbergh movie that you didn't hear about until like I think the Thursday that this movie was coming out. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Matt Damon's fat. You know, you, it's funny because Matt Damon people knew he was fat before he had a movie. Yeah, and, no. <laughs> they were like, I don't know if he's in a movie, but he sure is fat. Yeah, they and thought it was like the National Enquirer. Like, look who's got fat. Well, the, I can't believe it's even in the top five. I mean, you look at the posters, and it's like, okay, people were like, first off, who's Steven Soderbergh? Your average film film goer like joe Q- john q popcorn is like i don't know who that guy is mm-hmm. uh and then the poster is just a picture of a fat matt damon and you're like okay and, and some people really even know that's is. matt damon yeah it, it doesn't even really look like him uh, he's put on he's he's puffy faced yeah uh some people they, they, they look at that shit and they think that that's uh what was that fat dude uh who's always winning oscars and oh philip seymour hoffman? yeah i thought it was philip seymour hoffman from well, you never know, matt damon might be like you know what i like this i like pizza and beer and, and cheetos and shit fuck that I'm, I'm gonna be the new philip seymour seymour hoffman yeah exactly yeah, it's gonna be a fat off <laughs> yeah. they should make the, and you know what that's probably what they do for the next born movie it's like <laughs> Matt Damon says, yes, I will make another Bourne movie if he's fat. So now Jason Bourne dons the ultimate disguise. Home, home, home. Yeah. More Twinkies. <laughs> Instead of beating up people, he's beating up the concession machines. <laughs> Give me my goddamn Twinkie, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Shit falls on him. It's like a, it's like a two-minute movie. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> little fat hand got stuck in the machine <laughs> but uh okay so the informant doing very well it's not a bad movie we all agreed that it was okay yeah i think yeah. we gave it an average of a matinee didn't we yeah, yeah yeah i mean it's a good movie it's just surprising me because it really is kind of a it's a lot more dry than your average filmmaker film goer would even you know like but i keep hearing people who i know don't know a lot about film going to me going hey have you heard anything about this informant i've heard it's good i'm like okay yeah it is go see it yeah and people did go see it stop not giving bad. your goddamn money to michael bay <laughs> <laughs> and goddamn transformers and shit oh i got a good song for number three Uh-oh. <laughs> number three five. this movie looks like some bullshit <laughs> but isn't made it in the top five anyway this movie really now i've heard about them making this movie for a long time they're doing a remake of fame uh, i can't remember when the original fame came out sometime in the 80s yeah it came out sometime early 80s With irene Cara. Irene Cara, I think, wasn't Debbie Allen in the movie too? Maybe, uh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, I don't saw know. it. I just don't remember. I used to watch the damn TV series of it back in the day. I just, see, I don't even remember the movie. I just, w- wait a minute. The movie was the one where like, that's it, Coco. Yeah, take it, it ends on a totally dark note without yeah. Irene Cara having to take off her clothes and stuff <laughs> to get, try and make it in show business. And there she's are, crying. Coco. Yeah, it's like, oh my God. But isn't this one kind of more like, like they're going for the, the, like kid friendly version of and this fame. is like a high school musical four almost yeah. from what i hear it's like uh, for the the criticisms of this movie that i've heard is that they it's not as edgy as the original fame i mean they said hey there's a price to pay for fame which means you probably will have blow to jobs. take your yeah, yeah. blow doing blow jobs at the end of the movie you know <laughs> because you know they didn't show it they didn't show uh what happened when coco was taking off our clothes but you knew what was gonna happen next you're gonna get on that casting couch and become a cokehead but they were like saying yeah the, the whole price of fame is hard and a lot of you are, are about to pay it right now and they said this movie just kind of softens it up and takes that edge off of it uh, the movie really didn't even do all that well. See, they were talking about making this movie for a long time, remaking it, and everybody was thinking, like, because uh, they, they were even sending us, like, notices, like, <clears throat> oh, they got the cast for fame. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at the song lineup. No, I got some oh. of those, too, and was like, really, gosh, you are, there's no point to doing this at all. Yeah. You're, you're, you're taking a name and hoping some older folks who remember finally the original movie might be added to the, the legions of kids will do anything you tell them to uh, who go to see this. Uh, you know, without the dark side, this isn't an interesting story at all. No. You know, I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen this movie. Fair enough. They didn't screen it for critics, which is never a good sign. Well, they did screen the movie for some people. Yes. It that, was. Now, remember, th- here we go. It was in th- a little theater in Antarctica. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Only two penguins saw the movie. <laughs> exactly. They and didn't even, like it. And even they were like, man, this ain't like the original. This just sucks. This is some bullshit. <laughs> this is some bullshit, man. <laughs> Let's go get some fish. <laughs> Let's we always up fish. Let's go look at some Eskimo porn. Fuck this. Yeah. They, but this movie, they screened it. Now we got to keep in mind we're in Austin. Yeah, you know, and it, we're not a, a primary market right now. That could change next week when somebody else suddenly decides that we are. But like about six months ago, somebody up there decided that we are no longer an important market. So we're not getting first like the 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 critic stuff for a lot of these films. Yeah, that's true. So to be fair, uh, we have to admit that um, when we say there's no screening for the movie, we don't know if it's us. 
or if it's or, or if they're really not having it for the rest of the the world. We're not cosmopolitan we're, yeah, enough. We're not hurting enough for your little fame movie. But so this film did not for all the hype that they were giving it and all the build up. The movie didn't open up that well. The movie opened up at uh, ten million, pretty much, and not so bad. They said they the studios reported. They said we wish it had opened up bigger, but. For a budget of $18 million, we ain't really worried about it. Yeah, it's going to make its money back almost no matter what. And let's just hope they don't make uh, Fame 2 or some shit like that. Because you know how it is. A movie, critics will say, don't do this. And even the fans will be like, well, you know what? We're not going to turn out in this in big droves. But because it was so cheap, they'll keep making it. Now, who's making this? Who made this film? It was... uh, What company? Let's let's see. That is... It was MGM. MGM, who's associated with Disney... Are they associated with Disney? Pretty sure MGM and DC, Disney are the, are are run by the same people at this point. Because MGM, they said they they said we don't we broke. Yeah. <laughs> they like we don't, you know Bilbo Baggins and the Hobbit. That <laughs> motherfucker might not get a movie. <laughs> no, because <right>. we <laughs> wait a minute. Let's see. We're making fame for ten million dollars. I mean for eighteen million dollars, and we got ten million dollars in. Shit. And with no name actors and all that, but yet Bilbo Baggins, you want to what you want to bring in dragons and goblins and <laughs> all that kind of shit. We got to shoot him in Mordor and all. No, fuck no. Is we ain't MGM doing, this. doing the Hobbit? They were the, oh oh no no no. Was I think they the one? I'm sorry. They were the ones who had like. Uh, they're the ones who had the rights over it at first. Oh, really? Okay, I didn't know. Now that the the Lord of the Rings was what the no longer existing New Line Entertainment, right? Yeah. How the fuck do you make the Lord of the Rings movies and go out of business? I do not understand that at all. But okay, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> something fucked up. Something smelly is going on in Denmark. There's so a, there's saying. an accountant somewhere living in Mexico or Iceland or something who ran off with all that money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cooking books and shit. Because there's no way those guys should be flush for like the next eighty years after that. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's uh, it's MGM with the Hobbit, and uh, and you know who else is in trouble? James Bond. James Bond is in trouble. Yeah, James Bond is on James MGM. James Bond's always in trouble. So, <laughs> yeah, James. <laughs> yeah, if anybody can help out, you know, uh, MGM is James Bond. Yeah, the president of MGM is probably like a bald guy with a big white cat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, MGM and Disney, if they're connected like that, which I'm pretty sure they are, actually. Uh, it sounds to me fame is just a ploy to g- end up being the the opening salvo of a t- new TV show, really. Because why not? I mean, that's what I'd do, even though it's you know money motivated and that's you it. know what that is, that's probably true. You got a good point there. Maybe they made fame because they just said fuck it. You know this. Even if the movie doesn't do that well, hey, CW will probably pick this shit up. We got a new fame. Or create something. brand yeah. name recognition is all that is. Yeah, it's one big commercial. Yeah, so. I, I would be surprised if there wasn't a fame television series on the way, but. You know, maybe that all depends on how the movie actually ends up doing. Yeah. Which brings us to number two. Number two. Damn, man. (laughs) I'm just looking around the room to make sure my windows haven't cracked yet. (laughs) Yeah, I almost went into opera instead of Spill.com. It was a close call. TV was vibrating for a little while, man. (laughs) Uh, Number two is surrogates. Well, good. Which brought in not a whole lot of money. Uh the movie costs eighty million dollars to make. Oh, it brought in fifteen this weekend. Okay, so that's not a good sign so far. Nah, fifteen nah. is not a strong opening. This is considered to be a disappointing weekend. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, everybody's a fantastic fest. Yeah. <laughs> is that what it is? It's- the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I, it. I was wondering because it's like fantastic fest is here in in, in Austin. I mean, it's not it's, it's getting bigger, but it's not by, by any means like the whole world is looking in on it. No, but I couldn't get this like this top ten until late today. And I was thinking to myself, well, they must be a fantastic fest. I was like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, this it's considered to be a pretty disappointing weekend. And <clears throat> and this is obviously a reflection of that. It's a shame because yeah. that is, it's a fun little movie. It's a great, like what well, we gave it a matinee. It's a great matinee film. You'll go in, you're, you're not going to be disappointed uh, because it's, you didn't spend nine bucks. You spent four, four fifty. And, uh, man, it, it, it's a, it's a fun time. You know, I, I hope more people do end up going to see it word of mouth gets around so that, you know, it does a little bit better. I will always, I always root for the sci-fi films though. The ones that aren't just nothing, but you know, Pandorum. <laughs> well, I was going to get to that, uh, in a little bit. Oh uh, God. Is that uh, number one? Number one oh. in the number one movie in the top five on Spill is oh boy Pandorum man Pandorum brought in twenty four point six million dollars. See, it man. probably cost less than that. In that movie, Pandorum, 
Pandorum costs like $40 million. Okay, okay. So, so it's already <laughs> over it's, halfway there. It's halfway there, man. Pand- Pandorum. I'm, man, no, I'm kidding, man. Uh, Clyde with a chance of meatballs open up number one. Oh, thank God. Because okay. <laughs> that's well deserved. Man. I know people right now, they're looking like, no, Corey, you're wrong. You're wrong. God damn it. <laughs> this, this, you dumbass. No, I, I, I was fucking with okay. Clyde, man. No, Clyde with a chance of meatballs. Still number one for the second week. Brought in $25 million so way ahead of the new openers. Oh, geez. Has brought in sixty million dollars so far. Uh, the movie is a straight up one hundred dollars, one hundred dollars, one hundred million dollars to make. Flat, one hundred dollars to make. <laughs> Boy, computer graphics these days getting cheaper and cheaper. I don't have a Pixar movie for you, but how about Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs? Just put it in my hand. Yeah, see, you, hey, you two go get a Mac laptop and make your, your own. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm working on uh, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs Part Two right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just while we're recording, it, I'm going over budget. Mine cost one hundred and one million dollars to make. <laughs> I'll put an extra meatball in there. <laughs> you can see where that money went. Yeah, you, you can see. It. There it comes. That extra meatball right there. <laughs> I did that. That looks nice, Corey. I like that meatball. Uh, no, it's doing very well. And we love this movie, man. Yeah, we did. We went we went a little hog wild over this film, in fact. Yeah. Yeah, because we didn't expect it to be as good as it is. I, I went in with an open mind, but uh, I was looking at it and saying, I, I, I'm sorry. I have a little bit of, of a bias when it comes to movies that are based on children's books and very short children's books at that yeah and they go off and make this overblown cg film and i've been disappointed in the past but this is a really inspired film i love been hurt before i have i'm not gonna be hurt again girl i've been hurt before (laughs) so you saying i'll be the black guy just talks the words in the background girl i've been hurt before by your cg animals your cg animals but your meatballs Mm-hmm. Really got to me. Yes, they did, girl. And your ass and titties too. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, so Pandorum, on the other hand, yeah, failed and, miserably. I well, yeah, man, you you could say that this movie's gonna have a long way to catch up. It did have a budget of forty million dollars, but it only brought in four point four million dollars this weekend so so but even yeah. so genre films like that like the low budget ones they have a strong life on dvd and any genre film that makes it so far as to make it into a wide release theatrically mm-hmm. is gonna do just fine on dvd because people are like oh yeah i remember that coming out of the theater maybe we'll check that out yeah and i tell you man this movie it it's not bad a lot of people got pissed and the review that we did. Yeah. yeah I <clears> saw <throat> that. It was like, really? People yeah. got pissed without even seeing the damn thing. Yeah. And I, I even said, I'd like it. I didn't look, I don't want to go watch it at the theater because I have seen this before. And people who had even seen it, they're like, will you stop comparing it to aliens? You compare everything to aliens. It's like, yeah, shut the fuck up, man. Have you seen the movie? No. Well, shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, you know, there's a point where you go like, while it's fair to say that some people over compare stuff like that and it gets a little old, you know, sometimes you just got to call a spade a spade when it's wearing it on its sleeve. Like, Hey, we saw, aliens a bunch of times like look what am i supposed to do not yeah. point it out hey look the emperor's got no clothes what how dare you say that yeah i mean <laughs> shit is aliens and predator i mean goddamn. what do you want me to tell you if uh, sometimes you just call an alien an alien <laughs> that's what this was i mean not in a bad way yeah had, had some great designs to it man i mean yeah. and people have a you know something i will give people credit i mean you do sort of have a throwback to the design in in the in the original alien mm-hmm. i mean because after the in the 80s after we got that really gritty look on a spaceship that's uh everybody started kind of following that style oh yeah that so, was the, the and and to be fair if there really were like you know industrial mining ships out there it's probably you know in a pragmatic sense pretty much what they'd look like yeah you know, there wouldn't be a lot of frills yeah <laughs> yeah so i mean you're right i mean it's it's hard to to criticize this movie for that i mean because uh, Everything's a throwback to that. What's that movie where that guy was growing plants and vegetation in space? Silent Running. Silent Running. Yeah. I think that's probably the only movie that predates Alien with having that real gritty look on a spaceship. Um, I mean, it had that dark, sort of like unkempt type of look to it. I mean, certainly in 2001 had tight corridors and stuff like that. But it was real know? shiny and everything. Everything was yeah. well lit. Yeah, <laughs> everything was smooth. I, I think I saw a Mexican maid going through that, cleaning up the ship. And everything. <laughs> no. Yeah, they're all in their spaceships, and there's, you know, Conjita going, no! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Mr. Hal, no. <laughs> Conjita. <laughs> Have you cleaned the bathroom yet? Uh, no, Hal, no. <laughs> but, 
There's some, you know, made some Mexicans mad out I there. know. We well, ain't all maids and shit. Sooner or later, we're going to offend everyone, so might as well just I know. get it out of the way. No, you are not all maids. Some of you are maids in space. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've met a few Spanish-speaking maids from other countries. So it's- <laughs> from, I think they're from outer space. <laughs> <laughs> no, not from outer space. Well, they might have been, for all I know. I couldn't understand what they were saying. <laughs> Me, <laughs> <laughs> what do I need to worry about? So no, no, uh, no, speaky Espanol. I don't know. <laughs> That's Spanish. <laughs> what are you doing? Hey, get that off my face! I don't want to bury your children in my tummy. <laughs> uh, man. Let's go on to some uh, some big news in movies right now. What? Though. Nothing's happening. Everybody's a fantastic fest. You know what? I, <laughs> somebody probably wished they could have gone to Fantastic Fest, but if they had gone, they would have been arrested. Okay, what is this? Man, uh, they, they got they finally got your boy, man. Who's my boy? Uh, you know who your boy is, I mean, Leon? Uh, no, no, no. This, we go way back before Leon, man. I think, in fact, I think you need you need to stop snitching, man. I think you got him in trouble. Yeah, well, stop snitching, Cyrus, because you know what your snitching did. What did, what did what did I do? After all this time, people not being able to get Roman Polanski. Roman Polanski? What, Roman Polanski got arrested? <laughs> yeah, yep. well, you've heard this. We talked about this before it started. Yeah. I'm trying to play along, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> 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 no, nah, we were talking. I'm an actor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You were acting with me. Yeah. But who is this Roman Polanski? Oh, come on, ass. It's totally right. We're so fake. <laughs> <laughs> We're just a bunch of characters. No, nah, man, they finally got your boy, man, Roman Polanski. They, uh, for those who don't know, Roman Polanski uh, 